Recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to my, my good friend, Representative Hanabusa. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to speak in support of my bill, uh, H.R. 4851, the Kennedy King National Historic Site Establishment Act of 2018. I'd also like to thank my colleagues on the Natural Resources Committee for their very prompt consideration of this bill, including Chairman Bishop and Ranking Member Grijalva. H.R. 4851 is a bipartisan and bicameral bill with the full support of the entire congressional delegation, including my good friend and colleague, Congresswoman Susan Brooks, including my uh, mentor, one of my heroes, Representative John Lewis, and my buddy, Representative Joe Kennedy. I thank them for joining the delegation of original co-sponsors of Hoosiers. You know, I introduced the Kennedy King Establishment Act, Mr. Speaker, at the request of my constituents uh, to provide formal uh, National Park Service recognition uh, to the site where Senator Robert F. Kennedy gave an extraordinary speech in Indianapolis in the spring of 1968. This recognition, as well as addition to the National Civil Rights Network, will help this location uh, because this location, set on a uh, community board over there, uh, remains visible and accessible for the inspiration of present and future generations, Mr. Speaker. Some of my colleagues, maybe they've heard the story, as was previously mentioned by uh, my other colleague, that Robert Kennedy had a scheduled speech in the great Hoosier state in the city of Indianapolis during his campaign for presidency. However, just before he was to give those remarks, Mr. Speaker, he was told of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Before the news became widely known, his advisors said he shouldn't speak at all. They suggested he should stand back. But Robert F. Kennedy, he wanted to speak. Despite the risks of outbursts or interruptions, he had something important to say in person and face to face for all who were gathered. He changed his planned remarks on the fly and broke the news of Dr. King's assassination to the large crowd assembled in the park. He called for a nonviolent response to Dr. King's death. Robert Kennedy's speech has been described as one of the greatest classes of the 20th century, as a call for unity and nonviolence in a time of great unrest. I'd like to include the text of the speech in today's record, Mr. Speaker. But you know, as we approach the 50th anniversary of RFK's speech, it becomes very clear that America needs this national treasure to be preserved and promoted beyond the residents of Indianapolis. This powerful message of nonviolence and response to violence is more timely and important than ever. The Smithsonian has described 1968 as the year that shattered America. It was a time when divisions were sharp and the morale of this country was low. Many stirred up hatred and fear with venomous rhetoric, which drove people long left out of America's bounty to the limits of their very humanity. And many cities erupted in flames and violent riots. When other cities expressed their justified pain and anger and disenfranchisement with destruction, Robert Kennedy's calm voice of reason changed the hearts and minds of people who were feeling so much pain. Indianapolis was the only major city in America that did not burn in that season of pain and violent disruption. JFK was assassinated. Martin Luther King was assassinated. And just two months after RFK's emotional speech in Indianapolis, he too was assassinated. But in his youth and his ability to feel the pain of others, RFK called on those who were hurting to turn away from violence and hate and practice what MLK practiced. This message and this special place needs to be shared with Americans across the country today and into the future. The amendment approved by the committee will add the Kennedy King site to a new civil rights network, Mr. Speaker, 
and it will designate the location as a commemorative site. This is a timely first step, and I look forward to seeing the bill signed into law this year. And after this step, our constituents and I will continue to count on congressional support for our efforts to establish the Kennedy King National Historic Site and a unit of the National Park System in Indianapolis, Indiana. I again thank my good friend, Congresswoman Susan Brooks. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this great bill, and I yield back the balance of my time.